Hey everyone! Old friends of the channel might remember a series of videos where I introduced fighting game characters from different countries or regions of the world. It's been a while since I tackled the subject though, with the last entry, Fighters from Brazil, being released almost a year ago. So I figured it was about time to give this another chance, but now as a top 10 list. Also, as you surely noticed by the title, today we will not be covering fighters from any one particular country or region. Au contraire, my friends, in this video we'll look at some of my favorite fighting game characters that are originated from places with very few representatives. Now, I'm not saying these characters are definitely the only ones from their countries to appear in a fighting game, but chances are this will be the case at least for the majority of them. Also, I should mention that while I did try to cover as many regions and series as possible, most franchises don't seem to venture outside a certain group of countries, while others are absolutely packed with examples. So with all that said, let's stop wasting time and get on with our list. In number 10, we have Patrick van Heinting from the Netherlands. Patrick is a professional wrestler who appeared in Buriki 1. With 15 years of experience, he enters the tournament to prove to everyone that his strength in the ring is still unmatched. He is quite a loudmouth and noted for his mic skills, often messing with his opponents and saying whatever he wants, which is precisely what his fans love about him. With a single appearance in a very obscure game, there is not much more to say about Van Heinting, but since some of his fellow Buriki 1 fighters did manage to find their way into other SNK games, I guess there is at least hope his day will come too. Number 9 now, Bang Boo from Cuba. Making his first and only appearance in Toshin Den 4, Bang Boo is a cyborg and one of the Gerard Foundation's finest creations, with nothing more than a brain inside his completely robotic body. Wielding two huge cannons, he's an almost flawless warrior. Consciousless and emotionless, he was designed to be a machine of war, but was instead used as a pilot in the army. One day, he was given orders by a mysterious individual to obey the Chinese sorcerer Gemma and enter the 4th Toshin Dai Bukai as part of his team. However, if Gemma were to assemble the four holy weapons, he would then have to be eliminated. In his ending, Bang Boo absorbs the power of the artifacts, freeing himself from his programming and deciding to use this new strength to take over the world. Gameplay-wise, Bang Boo's hard slash attacks all possess unblockable projectiles. While he is vulnerable, for the most part, his immense strength makes up for that. Number 8. Zarina from Colombia Nicknamed the Dazzling Smile, Zarina made her debut in the King of Fighters 14 as part of the South America team, which is basically the Brazil team, since that's where she currently lives and both of her teammates are Brazilians. She is a nice and cheerful person, but is not above resorting to dirty tricks to get what she wants. Zarina fights to protect the nesting place of her toucan companion, Coco, whose species is facing the threat of extinction. In her team's ending, she reveals that she was able to procure the land she wanted with Antonov's help, as he already had purchased much of it for one of his business. Although the others assume she had won him over by appealing to his emotions, she gleefully admits she simply kicked him in the crotch instead. Like Elena in Street Fighter, Zarina makes use of her long-range kick normals and high floaty jump to control space. Her most distinctive trait is by far her surprisingly high damage output. From all kinds of starters at all levels of bar, Zarina can output startling damage anywhere on screen. However, she still sits somewhere around low mid-tier since she relies more heavily on smart, subtle, neutral decisions than other characters. Even though she's Colombian, Zarina is one of the most Brazilian characters in fighting game history. She is covered in the national colors, has a pet toucan, loves samba, plays beach volleyball, and even fights with a style that is in capoeira only in name. This is the main reason she is featured so low in this list. As a representative of a very rare country in fighting games, Zarina does a terrible job at reminding people she comes from Colombia. And in number 7, Sahad Asram Ryuto from Lebanon. Sahad comes from the Power Instinct franchise, which you might remember from my video talking about old ladies in fighting games. He's the youngest child in a very important family and also the only boy, having three older sisters, Francesca, Sofia and Sarah. The three girls always had a typical spoiled girl behavior, being a bit snobbish, often overreacting or mocking anything the boy did or said, making him feel terrible about himself. This eventually led Sahad to hide his emotions to the point that he grew up as someone with a very inexpressive face who never really reacts to anything. Since his mother hails from a lineage of magicians, 
Sahad was also trained in the mystical arts from an early age, but his true power only appears when he stops repressing himself. This, however, awakens an evil aura and he becomes very dangerous, which is enough reason for him to try to control his emotions at all costs. He decided to participate in his first Koketsuji tournament in order to get closer to the part of his family composed of strong fighters and maybe even earn the respect of his three sisters. After that was done, Sahad wasn't interested in joining any more tournaments, but decided to do so one more time because one of the fighters was Angela Belty, his love interest. At this point I wish I had anything more to say about him, perhaps something related to his gameplay, but not only Power Instinct is not the most popular fighting game franchise out there, but the versions where Sahad appeared are also not between the ones that seem to have some sort of competitive scene. As a result, well, you just gotta have to try him for yourself. Do make sure to come back and tell us all about it though. It's number 6 now, Chaos from Sri Lanka. Appearing in Battle Arena Toshinden 2 and 3, Chaos was one of the executives at the Himitsu Kesha, sharing equal footing with Gaia and Uranus. Up until Toshinden 4, Chaos had possessed one of the four sacred arms, namely the Genbu Shield. In her bid to assume even more power, Uranus one day suggested for Chaos to be the Gynea pig in an experiment to artificially augment the human body and brain. While Chaos' natural fighting skills were enhanced, the experience unfortunately drove him completely insane. When Gaia had illegally held his own Toshin Daibukai in an attempt to start a rebellion against the Himitsu Kesha, Chaos had no issue with his mutiny, but Uranus declared Gaia a traitor and brainwashed Chaos to assassinate him. After the downfall of the secret society, his brainwashing soon broke, with Chaos now free of their influences. However, with the vacuum of power left behind as the secret society crumbled, Chaos soon felt the presence of a new evil arising in the world and left to discover the organization executing their plans to take over. While he was still left mentally unstable and with a lust to kill, Chaos had confronted and killed the master ritualist Schultz from within the third Tonshin Den and had also helped in the downfall of the organization. During the events of the fourth tournament, the evil Chinese magician Gamma possesses the shield once carried by Chaos, indicating a high probability that he was killed by him. In number 5 we have Bobby Strong from Nigeria. Bobby is quite a peculiar case. Designed as the new boss character in Shin Goketsuji Itsuku Bono Kaiho, the Japanese exclusive sequel to Power Instinct Metri Melee, Bobby's design, name, personality and fighting style were inspired by the real-life martial artist and comedian Bobby Ologum, who even voices the character. His story in the game doesn't go much further than being hired by the king of a certain country to participate in the tournament. He fights using strange but powerful techniques and in various moves and poses Bobby's head often grows two or three times its size. Much like his respective motion caption character, he often displays the same facial expressions during such moments. This is definitely a very niche character, but I find the story behind him quite interesting. Even though Bobby Ologun is mostly unknown in the western world, I can imagine that for Japanese fans, seeing a character based on his image in a fighting game must have been quite a treat back in the day. Number 4 is Miss Steel from Malaysia. Miss Steel, whose only appearance is in Battle Arena Toshin Den 3, is a fortune teller who serves under Abo in the Soshiki as his third in command. She is his personal fortune teller and confidant, working close to him as his official advisor. In a close meeting one day, Abel told his top three commanders, Vermilion, Mistil and Schutz, about his plan to bring Aegon Theos to Earth and that he entrusts all three of them to do their part. While Schutz, as the master ritualist, was in charge of the ritual ceremony and Vermilion, the field commander, was in charge of gathering and leading the assassins, Mistil's job was to obtain the detailed dossier of all Toshin Den fighters. At the third Toshin Daibukai tournament, Miss Steel had decided to participate in the event so that she could give Abel the time needed for the ritual ceremony. Eventually, she found herself encountering and facing off against Shizuku Fuji, a Japanese female gambler who was protecting the potential vessel for Aegon Theos, named David. Determined to fulfill her master's desire, Miss Steel fought with all her strength, but her efforts proved to be futile as she was no match for Shizuku. It turns out, however, that Miss Steel had secretly foreseen her own death prior to the tournament, but was still determined to fulfill her mission, regardless of her own predestined fate. I think this is an awesome little detail for an otherwise quite bland character, which is why I decided to put her so high in this list. 
As a fighter, Miss Steel is very ruthless and doesn't hesitate to eliminate any threats against the Soshiki. Though she is Shizuku's counterpart in the game, some of her moves, such as one of her special attacks, her overdrive and her soul bomb are very different. Her weapon is a large flute, as opposed to Shizuku's large kisiru, a Japanese smoking pipe. Ironically, according to the tier lists I was able to procure, Miss Tio is usually considered to be at least a little stronger than Shizuku in competitive play. Number 3, Luong from Vietnam. Debuting in the King of Fighters 14, Luong is a femme fatale fighter with mysterious motivations. She met Gun Il during his world tour and fell in love with him. Her official nickname is the Enchanting Beauty. A seductive woman of elegance, Luong likes to play with her opponents and feels excited in the heat of battle. Outside of it, she shows less of her cold side and rather shows affection towards Gun Il and his star student, Kim much to the latter's dismay given that he's already married with children. I should mention that I tried my best to limit this list only to confirmed cases, even cutting out some cool names because I couldn't find proof of the character's alleged origin. That said, Luong's birthplace hasn't been officially confirmed but is heavily implied that she is from Vietnam, since in the end of the Kim team in KOF 14, she can be seen wearing an Ao Zai, a Vietnamese traditional outfit. Furthermore, her interest in nail care may be an allusion to the predominance of Vietnamese women in the nail salon profession. It's all a little circumstantial, I know, but it's a lot more than some of the other cases and I thought it was enough to make an exception for her. Her fighting style is a stylized variation of Taekwondo, putting great emphasis in her kicks, agility, flexibility and acrobatics. Showing shades of Jung Hoon, she can take a ready stance and be able to throw snapping kicks with extreme range and quickness much like Ryuji Yamazaki with his arms. She's also shown breaking necks, whether from an accurate kick or as part of a standing head scissors grab. Luong is a relatively unique, yet simple character to play as she only has a few special moves, with her normals backing her up very nicely. She's a decent character for players who wish to take a simple, yet effective route or play a lot of mind games while getting a lot of damage off well-placed pokes and close-range combo opportunities. As a solid mid-tier fighter, she might be able to do so with some degree of success, even in competitive scenarios. In number 2, Jivatma from Indonesia. The main antagonist and final boss of KOF Maximum Impact 2, Jivatma aka the Dark Talon, is the leader of the QCL, a sub-syndicate of Ades, a secret group that trains assassins. He is sponsoring the tournament in the hopes of acquiring the bodies of the most powerful fighters on the planet, but is also behind the abduction of the world's top scientists. For the most part, Jivatma is very polite, but also sarcastic and sinister, believing himself to be superior to almost everyone. He was Duke's boss until Duke became leader of his own gang, Mephistopheles, and is likewise connected to most of the new characters introduced during the Maximum Impact series. Jivatma appears to know something about Alba and Soiri Mera's past, calling them Judaim, and is even responsible for Soiri's disappearance. He also knows the truth about Louise Mayrick, calling her by what's likely her original name, Lakia, and is responsible for ordering the death of Leanne Neville's parents due to her father refusing to join his organization. Most of Jivatma's attacks consist of stretching his limbs in a fashion similar to Dalsim, as well as reshaping them into blades. He also has an alternate combat mode stance, but curiously enough, a CPU-controlled Jivatma doesn't seem interested in using it. He is at best a mid-tier character. Jivatma's moveset is quite limited, but he does have the best reach and very powerful level 2 and 3 supers, provided you're able to connect with them. Another peculiar fact about him, and probably the reason why he's featured so high in this list, is that like all other maximum impact characters, Jivatma can be selected in both normal and another mode, which is basically an alternate costume. In Jivatma's case, his another design is actually female, making him almost a 2 for 1 character. While his normal mode was designed under the impression of a cockroach, Jivatma's female counterpart became a moth to contrast with Louise Mayrick's butterfly. And in number 1, Mudman from Papua New Guinea. Introduced in World Heroes 2, Mudman's last appearance was in 2005's Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. His design resembles the look of New Guinea headhunters and he was also inspired by Daijiro Morohoshi's manga, Mudman. He's a revered shaman, a witch doctor, and a holy warrior to his tribe. Mudman fights in the name of his god, Fafar, to rid the world of evil forces and protect nature, hoping to one day earn his right in the heavens. 
He's a man who is easily moved by the will of people, acting as their savior. Although he's a warrior with a serious mission, Mudman is pretty upbeat and cheerful. He mostly relies on his spirits to do his fighting for him, but is also capable of humanly impossible stunts, such as spinning in mid-air with just his mask. According to most Neo Geo Battle Coliseum tier lists, Mudman is at best a low mid-tier character, if not a little weaker, but some of his tools do excel in shutting down a few otherwise abusable strategies. Perhaps this character isn't for everyone, and I don't doubt many of you question my choice right now, but to me there's just something special about this lovable weirdo. It might be largely due to nostalgia, but when I think about fighting game characters from lesser known nations, Mudman certainly comes to mind. But what about you? How would your top 10 list look like? Leave your opinions below, like and share this video if you enjoyed the content, and stick around to pick something else if you want to see more videos in this series. There should be a link to another one on the screen right now. This has been a Duke Player, and I'll see you guys later.